Hello again and welcome to our preview of the weekend's Premier League action as well as a closer look at what our win probability model believes the outcome will be across the games. Now when it came to voting, well it was a great weekend for you, me and quite a few others last time out as we all managed to get one up on the supercomputer. It means that although Matt still leads the way at the top of the charts, everyone is closing in behind, led on a charge by Ollie. So here's hoping we can all be keeping it up this weekend. Let's start with a little bit of Friday Night Delight and two sides who have really enjoyed playing on this day of the week. Southampton have won three of their last four on a Friday and have drawn the other one while Norwich have won two of their last three, which is as many as they were able to do in their previous 14 such games in the competition. Our win probability model believes that the Saints will be successful in this one though, giving them a 57% chance of coming out on top and reversing their fortunes from earlier in the season, having lost the first game against the Canaries in Dean Smith's first game in charge. They've never lost to the same bottom side twice in the same season, but they have lost twice to the bottom ranked side in a season. That came back in the 1993-1994 season, losing to Queen's Park Rangers and Swindon Town. It's been a struggle in front of goal for Norwich recently because they have the lowest shots on target of any side in the Premier League this season at 70. And with an average shots on target per game of 2.8, well that's the lowest for any Premier League side since the 2004-2005 season. One man who isn't struggling, at the moment at least, is Shea Adams, who has been involved in a goal in each of his last three Premier League games, adding an assist last time out against Everton to the goals he scored against Tottenham and Manchester United. One thing though, he's never registered a goal involvement in four consecutive top flight appearances before. So the good news for you, voting for that game is already open on our Twitter account at Opta Analyst. So make sure your voice is heard as we now turn our attention to the second game of our preview with Aston Villa looking to do the double over Brighton in the league for the first time since the 1981-1982 season. And in that game earlier in the season, well, Villa limited the Seagulls to just six shots. Despite this, our win probability model believes that Brighton will be able to take the victory on home soil, being given a 35.6% chance of doing so, although Villa are definitely not out of this one. Brighton have only scored 10 goals in their 12 home games so far this season, with four of their six defeats also coming on home soil. But Villa have only won one of their last seven games, having previously won four out of the six first Premier League games with Steven Gerrard at the helm. Now I'll say this, if the traffic is bad and the trains are delayed, don't necessarily rush yourself to get to the ground because both teams have struggled to score in the opening 15 minutes of games in the Premier League this season. Both have done so twice this campaign and that's the lowest of any side in the competition. But I will say this, Villa do have a problem defensively in the opening 15 minutes of game. Their highest share of goals conceded have come in that time period where they have shipped 8 of the 37 goals they have conceded this term. There's a chance for Neil Mope to make a little bit of Premier League history for Brighton in this game as he currently stands on 26 goals for the Seagulls. One more strike and he'll become their highest goal scorer in the competition as he currently finds himself level with Glenn Murray. But could a strike from him lead them to victory? Voting for this game will open on Saturday morning. And with Liverpool in League Cup action this weekend, Manchester City have the chance to bounce back from that 3-2 defeat to Tottenham last time out and re-establish their six-point advantage at the summit. A trip on the road to Everton probably helps them out as Guardiola's side are unbeaten in their last 12 Premier League away games, shipping just eight goals on the road so far this term, with no side conceding fewer. As expected, our win probability model gives them a 63.9% chance of victory, as well as predicting wins for Spurs, Manchester United, Crystal Palace and Brentford.
And while some eyes will be at Wembley on Sunday, there's still some Premier League action to whet the appetite. And wait for this, it will be West Ham United's 13th game on a Sunday this campaign. Incredible stuff when you think about it. But recently, it's not gone too well for them. Having won five of the first seven such games in the competition, well, they failed to win any of the subsequent five. And despite this, our win probability model is backing them to emerge victorious against Wolves, giving them a 40.6% chance of doing so, which does feel a little strange to me, especially considering that Wolves have won three of their last four Premier League games played on a Sunday, as many as they had in their previous 13 such games. Now, one thing I hope I can guarantee this weekend in this game is goals because West Ham United have scored and conceded in 17 Premier League matches this season, more than any other side. And when they've played at home, well, in each of the 13 games they've played there, they've managed to find the back of the net. And it feels like the perfect time for Mikel Antonio to break a duck. He's faced Wolves more often without scoring than any other opponent in his English league career. So far, it's 820 minutes without finding the back of the net across 10 matches. But will he be the difference in this one? The poll for this game will open up on Sunday morning to make sure you cast your vote. In the meantime, though, make sure you head over to theanalyst.com for more great data-driven storytelling. And of course, check out all our fantastic podcasts as well, as well as that great bit of video content we put out the other day as we looked into who is the most successful English club team of all time. All of that for you to enjoy. But for now, thanks for watching and goodbye.